I remember thinking, I can't believe I just shared that. And now I look back and I'm like, thank goodness that I did because the connections that I've made and the people that have told me that I've helped, like that's more than I could ever hope for. I'm Amy Jo Martin. Welcome to the Why Not Now show. You know that thing you've been thinking about doing? Yeah, that one. Why not now? Have you ever actually taken the time to ask yourself, what's stopping me? Let's talk it through. This is your chance to give that idea the attention it deserves and take action. Each episode, I have a chat with a fascinating person from entrepreneurs to athletes, celebrities, my parents, rocket scientists, and all walks of life. We talk through a critical time when they've asked themselves, why not now? We dissect that day or even that moment, step by step. My guest today is one of my favorite humans. Heather Allen is the founder of Kaleida Cuts. She has been able to create a business in the intersection of where her passion, purpose, and skill collide. But she didn't start off doing this. She used to be a school teacher, and then she started a company that was actually a greeting card company. It didn't work out quite as she had planned. So she started another company, and she's really grateful she had that first one under her belt because that's what enabled her to really nail it the second time around. Her business is thriving. She has a 3D printed cookie cutter business. Heather prints cookie cutters with a 3D printer. That's her business concept. Heather is a creative. She's an amazing artist, and she's taken that and applied it to 3D printing cookie cutters. Well, it turns out they're really good cookie cutters. She's extremely creative, and that mixture has really resonated because she's now had more than 150,000 individual transactions on Etsy, individual sales. She's running a seven-figure business, and she's never had a website. She still doesn't have a website. It's almost up and launched, but she hasn't needed one yet. Now, Heather has been through my Renegade Brand Boot Camp program, and I'll never forget the day that she came to me and said, I don't see myself as a businesswoman. I had to take a deep breath and help her realize that she absolutely is a businesswoman, and now she does own that. She realizes she hasn't experienced accidental luck here with this business concept. She's earned it. And she's earned it by following her internal compass. She talks that all through and explains what that means. What's really cool is that Heather has grown her business primarily through Instagram. Instagram pushing to Etsy. And she's done this by being real. She shows up every day on Instagram stories. She's real. She's vulnerable. And just shares her life in these chronicles. Daily chronicles of being a mom and a business owner. And as a result of this, she's also opened up about her experience with anxiety. In turn, a lot of her community and her following has benefited from her being open about this conversation, and it's come full circle. Her business is thriving even more. She said she saw really an increase in business after she became really open about this personal side of her life. And that's where she injects more purpose. So it's it's cool to see how she's been able to reverse engineer that purpose into her business. It makes me so happy to see smart, kind, driven people, down-to-earth people thrive. And that's exactly what's happening with Heather. Being able to design my own day and do it in the most efficient way is a non-negotiable for me. I'm a bit of a time management nerd, so when I find something that allows me to be more efficient and effective, 
to get the most out of my day, I want to share it with everyone. So here's the scoop. I have a new tool in my productivity tool belt, and it's called monday.com. My team and I have never felt more organized professionally and personally, and my to-do list is no longer the boss of me. I feel more in control because every project, initiative, date, and task is captured and organized in one place, and my team is in the loop and involved every step of the way. We are in lockstep. Monday.com is like having a brand new operating system. Everything has its own home, deadline. You can see the team members associated with the tasks, and it's color-coordinated, so you can easily navigate your own task list. We all have multifaceted jobs, businesses, and lives. With Monday, you're able to keep all of these components organized in their own compartments, but you're also one click away from seeing the big picture and how they all integrate together. Creating systems and procedures within your day and business saves a lot of time. For example, my team and I have a dedicated Monday.com board for this very podcast. Did you know that there are 28 steps involved in getting one podcast ready for air? It's the same exact process every single time, and it's a system that we have put into place so we know the various key steps are assigned to certain people, and we've mapped out the entire process from start to finish within this one board. This allows us to be streamlined. It cuts back on the amount of emails exchanged as well as the amount of meetings needed. One feature I love is that my social media content calendar is built inside of monday.com. I finally have one that I actually use, I like, and it's embedded into my overall calendar as well. Another feature we use every single day is the Google Doc integration. You know I love a good spreadsheet. I can pull them into monday.com and edit them right there versus having 97 tabs open on my computer, which is extremely distracting and inefficient. If how we spend our days is how we spend our lives, then I can't think of anything more important than using the time in our days wisely. Head to hey.monday.com forward slash Amy Jo Martin to start your free trial today. That's H-E-Y dot Monday dot com forward slash Amy Jo Martin. Heather, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I am doing amazing. How are you? Great. I am very well and I am excited to hop in. You know the drill. Can you tell me about a time when you had a big decision to make and you asked yourself, why not now? My big why not now moment actually came from several smaller why not now moments that I now realize built up to this large one. And it all started, I went through college four years, became a teacher, never really knew why I became a teacher, but I became a teacher, went on to get my master's. I taught for five years and in my fifth year, I got married and my husband finally, he, I, I, w- I don't want to say finally, but because I didn't offer myself ever a chance to explore, my husband said, hey, why don't you take some time off? We're about to move. Don't teach for a year. And it was just like a door opened. And I started creating. I'd always loved to create. We moved to Florida. I opened a business. It was a greeting card shop. It did well during holidays, but I never felt fulfilled. And I was always chasing. And I had gotten pregnant. And I'm just throwing all this in there because life felt like it happened like that. And I still, it felt like a hobby and I was faced with the decision, you're about to have a child. This business is not going to provide an income. You're going to have to go back to teaching. Are you ready for that? And the answer was no, I was ready to do anything to not teach. And so my big why not now moment actually came, it was around Halloween. I was pregnant and Pretty much, I would say now looking back in a depressed state, 
I didn't really have any ambition except to be a mom. And there was just something that just felt empty, like, but what else? Like, I know this is big, but but what else are you going to do? And I happened to be scrolling through Instagram, which Instagram has been amazing for me and my life and my business. And I came across a person known as the Allison Show, and she was making sugar cookies. And something about them seemed so fun. And I noticed a hashtag, and it said sugar cookies, decorated cookies. And I started going down that rabbit hole, and I thought, wow, these are, these are really cool. I, that, this kind of reminds me of the things that I draw. I happened to stick my head out to my husband, who happened to randomly, at the perfect time in life, be designing a 3D printer in our dining room. <laughs> as you do. <laughs> as, as you do, as my husband does. And I just stuck my head out of the, bath, um, the bedroom, and I remember saying, hey, if I draw something, can you print a cookie cutter? And he was like, yeah. And I made cookies the next day. I took them to a party. People love them. And in my mind, I was like, okay, I can't, I can't make cookies for a living. I, one, I'm no baker. Two, that was a lot of hard work. But all I had to do was design one design, and then I could print a bunch of cookie cutters. Let me check this out. So I did some research. I realized that there was not that many cookie cutter shops in the world. <laughs> and... Um, just kind of got really excited about it and told my husband, what if we open a cookie cutter shop? Would you help me? And he was like, um, you really, you really want to do that? And I said, on top of this other Etsy shop, if I run two businesses, I can afford to stay at home with <laughs> our baby and I don't have to go back to teaching. So yes, I really want to do this. And he, from there, he was on board. We came up with a name and Within probably a month and a half, we had an Etsy shop up with 25 designs, and it just started from there, and I became a cookie cutter designer. <laughs> Amazing. I just love this story because it it was so organic, and one thing flowed into the next, and it's it's one of those things where you can't make this up, right? You just you can't make it up. However, here you have now, fast forward— a very successful company. You are doing it and growing and you didn't go to school for this. You probably didn't envision this, but it does what I always like to preach, which is your passion, purpose, and skill are colliding here. It It is doing that. So the name of your company is Kaleidocuts. I like the word kaleidoscope because it represented different shapes and colors and designs coming together, constantly changing, creating beauty. And I liked the word cuts because of cookie cutters. And we kind of morphed it together to be Kaleidocuts. Love it. And by nature, you had started the, I think it's really important, this portion of your story, you had started that greeting card company, right? And that was your first step into entrepreneurship. So would you say, is it accurate that that kind of eased the stress, yeah. the first 100%. step stress. I learned more from creating that company and failing at everything I was attempting because I learned why I was failing and what people were doing that was successful. And it, it just really opened my eyes to a lot about myself, a lot about the market, but I would say the biggest thing that I learned was when I started creating, I was in the greeting card industry. It was a mixture of drawing and hand lettering. But what I did not realize when I first started was the best way to be not, I wouldn't even say the best way to be successful, but the best way to be true to yourself is to, to design what makes you happy and not what you're seeing other people be successful at doing. And so I made the mistake of, well, this is what's successful for this person. Well, let me try to emulate that. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say that I was copying because that's not what I was doing. But my goal was never to create something that I was proud of. I, I love to create, but yet I was completely missing the mark that I was trying to design with other people's goals in mind, mm -hmm. what worked for them, not what worked for me. And so having that greeting card company open and then opening another business beside it where I was designing only for myself. I, I was designing cookie cutters, yes, but 
it was insane to me, the, the people in this community that kind of just took me in and accepted me. And then I realized it's because I was just being true to myself. They saw me. They didn't just see my designs. And it really made me aware of authenticity and how that was growing my business, whereas compared to this greeting card shop that had been open a year and a half was floundering. And it was because I was nowhere in there except what was you were seeing on a screen. And that wasn't really me if I was being honest with myself. So I learned not only about authenticity and failure, but I just kind of learned how to own up to mistakes that I had made and rather than feel ashamed of them, just to learn from them. I think that is a huge takeaway. Absolutely. Something that doesn't feel natural to us as first-time business owners and wanting so badly to succeed and, and to make it work. We like to look around and see what everybody else seems to be doing or what's worked for them. And and the magic and the actual secret code is somewhat the opposite of doing it for yourself and solving your own, you know, scratching your own itch per se. And then what happens as a result and the external, you know, reaction is it's incredible, but it doesn't feel intuitive at the time. So if there's anyone listening that is starting something or has already, and maybe you're just, you haven't felt, felt like you found your right stride, you might evaluate, am I doing that? Am I, am I doing this for myself in the way I believe makes sense for me versus what I think will work based on something that someone else has done. It's, it's amazing that you were able to learn that and then apply it to the second go round too. It wasn't easy, but <laughs> no, <laughs> coming to terms with coming to terms with your own, I guess, what would you say? Issues is probably one of the things that has helped. It's growing is not fun or easy or, and it's completely messy, but messy. Yes. A way, I guess to get, to get that, better. That word is like, my mantra lately, uh, messy. Embrace the mess. Beautiful mess. Everything seems to be a mess with the newborn and life kind of is different. So It only gets messier. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I like clean. Um, we'll figure it oh, out. No. <laughs> what are the things you that— You get a house cleaner. Yes. No, oh, I know for sure. I'm trying to outsource anything possible right now. Um, one of the things that I found really— just heartwarming about my experience with you, especially as you went through Renegade Brand Boot Camp and, and entering the program. It seemed you you even said you didn't feel like a business person. Uh, and here you are totally doing it. And you have been doing it. And you're th- your business is booming. It's growing. You just bought a commercial building. You're hiring employees. Like you are just rocking this. And yet you still didn't necessarily feel like a business person. And can you talk a little bit about that and how you do now? But I think that's so relatable too, is that we sometimes don't realize when we're doing it. Yes. Um, I actually remember the day I thought of myself as a businesswoman. Well, there was a day I thought of myself as a businesswoman and then a day I announced it. The day I thought it, I actually looked in my notebook at Renegade Boot Camp. Brought, I wrote it down. Oh my God, um, I just got chills. It was, <laughs> it was something... That you had said, and then my partner Elaine had mentioned, and it just morphed together. And um, yeah, I realized that um, I, I here it is. I saw my success as accidental luck. I'm not owning my resilience, and I needed to honor my internal compass. And I, when I started, I, I did not have confidence. I still am working on my confidence, but. I, I never wanted to own when people asked what I did. I was like, oh, I, you know, I'm a, a stay at home mom. And then I, and my husband would always say, well, you have, you know, a business. And I was like, oh, I, I have a shop on Etsy. I wouldn't even say what my business was or what I did. And then when I got into the cookie cutter market, even though I was becoming more and more successful, I didn't know how to accurately express what I did, except to say, well, I sell cookie cutters. And I was just met with the most random looks of, oh, <laughs> okay, um, that's okay, sure. What what do you mean? And so when I would still explain it to them, I had almost felt like I, I wasn't looked at as a businesswoman. So therefore, I wasn't seeing myself as one. And 
what I realized was I had to see myself as one for others to see me that way. Mm-hmm. And it took a long time to get there. Um, and I think I announced it on Instagram with a post, which all resulted from the Renegade Boot Camp, was just this applying of knowledge and learning and realizing and celebrating these small victories to see, wait a minute, I actually did all of this. That is what a quote unquote businesswoman does. I'm, I'm just Heather, but if I had to say what I do, I do run a business. It's, it's extremely successful and there's nothing wrong with owning that. And once I started saying that, um, uh, well, actually, I own my own business. And I was like, oh, wow, what do you do? And Well, I create baking products for um, bakers and designers, and I actually design them, and they have a template. So I get to be a part of the creation process and help other creators be creative. And there's a ton of creating and creative in there, but it kind of just made, it, it made me aware of my purpose. I wasn't just this cookie-cutter designer trying to keep up with demand actually was part of every single person that had one of my products. I was part of their day, part of their creation process. And something that I had designed in my head became something that they used and it went out into the world. And that's when I realized like, no, I'm doing more than just being a cookie cutter designer. And I just started owning my title. And recently with buying this building, I really had to own it because going in to sign paperwork and meeting insurance people and lawyers and everyone says, oh, well, what do you do? What's your business? And you have to explain it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, I just had to start having a confidence about myself. And it was nice to start seeing the reactions are still like, wow, that's that's different. But the way I explain it and the way I talk about myself, I guess, because I have a confidence now I can tell the looks are different if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. And it's not that I want it's not that I want to be respected, but I don't want the look of oh this poor girl. Oh no. <laughs> because that's what I felt like for so long is people are seeing me as oh this girl she just needed a hobby. She's, you know, this is not a business. And deep down what I had to realize was no one no one else's opinion matters as long as I'm true to myself. And that's kind of what brought me out of Michelle was Am I going to live my life based on looks of others and worrying about what they think about my path or owning it and being like, okay, what can I, how can I turn this into more things that make me happy and not just be a cookie cutter designer? Mm-hmm. And that's where I'm at now. So I love what I do, but I, I'm also excited because with getting a building and hiring employees, it frees my time up to do more things. And I have this renewed spirit about me again where I'm like, okay, what else, what's next? Like I'm, I'm excited again. So Amazing. definitely owning, owning being a boss because it's nice when you do these things for so long, like cleaning cookie cutters and packaging orders and it's monotonous and you feel the time being sucked away from you. You start to lose that vibrancy and that fire inside that runs the business because you're not being able to create. So it's nice to get some of that time back again to put back into my business. So I'm excited about that. That's amazing. And as I'm listening to, I just realized you have a lot of parallels with Emily McDowell, who's been on the show in terms of not only kind of (laughs) starting with the greeting card side of things, but also getting back to why and what you enjoy about your business and being able to get there. Sometimes it's very difficult. And what you said about thinking for the longest time, it was accidental luck that created this success. And then realizing you needed to honor that internal compass because that's actually what got you to where you are is a big experience. That's a life work, you know, for a lot of people. And I'm just, I'm so excited for you. So let's talk a little bit about the role that Instagram has played in your business. And let me just preface this with, you did start on Etsy and it was huge for you. It was the perfect place. And what a lot of people, and I hope you don't mind me showing this, Heather, but what a lot of people would be surprised to hear is that you didn't have a website for the longest time, right? And we are still working on <laughs> still- launching it. I am working on it right now, actually. I'm with the designers. It's almost complete, but now we're working on the the backdoor stuff, the um, I love SEO it. Oh, and all of this information that I don't know, but I'm learning. I <laughs> love it. That, so. But yes, we are on Etsy and we're about to hit 150,000 sales. Amazing. 
Totally. That's not revenue. That's number of sales, right? Right. Okay. So that's, and that's where I just think, you know, it's such a democratized arena we're playing in as business people of what can fuel your business and what the infrastructure can look like and what it doesn't have to look like. And just the fact that Instagram has been huge for you too, where you've had these two tools that in most respects are free or almost, um, to grow your business. And I love the resourcefulness and the kind of scrappy side of being able to do that and generating seven plus figures in revenue and doing, you know, these things that people would be like, wait, is that possible without a website? And it's like, hell yes, it actually is. She's doing it. This is amazing. It is. It's possible. And um, yeah, uh, what I noticed, our Instagram, we've had Instagram since it start. Um, we started our business. And I look back to my beginning days and I was putting cookie cutters on scrapbook paper and taking photos. <laughs> and when Instagram stories came about, I really jumped on board with that. I'm normally a very introverted person, but something about chronicalizing my day kind of helped me being a stay-at-home mom that my husband was gone for long periods of time with military life. And I was there with this young child running a business. It was completely lonely. I was in a new state, no family. And it was kind of my way to not only just talk out my day without talking to a dog or a baby, mm-hmm. but having that community of conversation back I and mean, um, relating to me. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that our sales started picking up um, and it stayed pretty steady for a while. And then I really took a chance one day and I really, I can't tell you what caused me to get on my phone this day because it was probably one of my worst days. But that's also what I think opened myself up to my community and my the people that followed me and they kind of started seeing a real person. Um, but what happened was I just had my second child running a business postpartum anxiety, postpartum depression. It all came to a head. And I remember my husband walking in the house and me handing him the baby, looking over my shoulder and saying, I'll be back and just walking out. I'm sure he thought, Lord, where is she going? (laughs) But what I was doing was I was heading straight to the hospital. And I went in, I just, it was something I, I, like, I felt no shame. I told my doctors what I was feeling. I got medicine that day and I went outside to get in our car and it wouldn't crank. And I just started laughing and I was like, (laughs) really? Okay. I'm stuck here for 30 minutes now while I wait on my husband and these two kids that I just walked out on basically to come pick me up. And I was stuck there. And so I just opened my phone and started telling not all of my story, but just basically what I was doing, where I was, why I was there. And I ended it with, it's completely okay to ask for help. It's completely okay to, to acknowledge that you're feeling these things, but your feelings aren't who you are. You know, if, if anyone is like this or, you know, you start feeling this way, go get help. Don't wait till you're like me and walking out the door because you don't know what else to do. But still, even if you do that, get help because your feelings aren't who you are. And that day I was flooded with messages. And I even had people sending me messages saying, Heather, your story was so amazing. And I don't really know how else to support you. So I just bought some cookie cutters. They're so amazing. Thank you. And it was, it was just eye opening. Like you, what? And I remember asking my husband, like, why are they, why are they buying cookie cutters? Because they liked what I said. And he was like, Babe, sometimes people want to support and they don't know how to do it except to give. And he's like, and that's how you give to someone that you don't know. And I was mm. like, wow, like very humbled by that. And I kind of just have used Instagram as a way to deal with my own mental issues and anxiety and depression and things that I struggle with and knowing that there are 10 times more people in the world that struggle with it than you would ever realize. And opening up on a platform like this, they feel like it's a, a one-on-one conversation. And when you, someone sends you that direct message, it really just opens up a new world of communication where it, it makes me almost feel selfish because it helps me in opening up to them 
because then they open up to me and I almost feel like then I'm helping them not Mm -hmm. really focused on myself but at the same time I'm completely working on myself if that makes any sense it's nice to take the focus off myself and then realize after I've talked to so many people okay um I just completely opened up about something I was struggling with. And now I feel like that's completely lifted and I've just helped these people. And I really only started off with just wanting to vent. And it's just crazy how this Instagram world and it brings together people that maybe aren't even like minded that just start following along with a person. And you you realize you may not be like minded, but you have very similar circumstances or you think about life the same or you struggle with anxiety just as much and you really just want to see what other people are doing to overcome it or just to know that someone gets it when you've had a bad day and you want to say, I completely lost it today. And they say, it's okay. You can try again tomorrow. So it's been amazing. I don't feel like they're my customers, even though I would say 90, 93% of our sales are direct from Instagram. People clicking on our link and going like they they go from our Instagram rather than going to our website. Ninety-three. Um, it's just pretty amazing to me. Yeah. Whoa. That they they choose to follow me from there, and it really that's really when our business took off was me learn really getting vulnerable, not really understanding that that's what I was doing at the time. Honestly, I probably was such in a brain fog that I just needed to talk it out, and talking to my phone seemed much easier. But then I hit a send button and it actually went out to a ton of people that I couldn't see. Um, <laughs> and it, it wound up being a blessing in disguise because I remember thinking, I can't believe I just shared that. And now I look back and I'm like, thank goodness I did because the connections that I've made and the people that have told me that I've helped, like it, that's more than I could ever hope for. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. All right, everyone, I've got an announcement. As of today, we are officially enrolling for the 2021 Renegade Accelerator Program, formerly called the Renegade Brand Bootcamp. Okay, so who is this program for? What is it? The Renegade Accelerator is for driven female leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs ready to massively increase their impact and income. The program is for like-minded, like-hearted women all over the globe. The experience is intimate, live, real-time, virtual, and it's led by me. Our curriculum is equal parts education, practical education, collaboration, and accountability. In the accelerator, you'll learn directly from me, and I share everything I've learned over the past 20 years in business. We meet in real time to learn, discuss, and grow together. This is high touch. I'll teach you a variety of things from personal branding to the business side of public speaking, podcasting, publishing, marketing partnerships, how to productize your intellectual property, and we even talk about investing. I teach you all about the different types of investing in order to build your personal wealth. You will also learn the renegade mentality, which is a key ingredient in your success to generate real results. This program is the career love of my life because I get to curate a mosaic of driven, like-minded, like-hearted women who come together to lift each other and themselves up to the next level. After the Renegade Accelerator, you become a member of my top-level alumni community. This group of unmatched women who are making a positive impact is personally curated by me. The relationship building and networking opportunities are endless. And this collective of real valuable connections will be something that you have forever. If you're at the point where you are ready to take action and accelerate, head to renegadeaccelerator.com. You can sign up for more information where I will guide you in determining if the program and the timing is right for you. If not you, then who? And if not now, then when? Why not now? Head to renegadeaccelerator.com. Hi, everyone. If you are digging this podcast, please do us a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It just takes a moment and it means a ton to us. 
There's so much to just kind of dissect about everything you just shared. First of all, I've had chills the whole time because this story is it is just extremely powerful. And we, uh, I think sometimes we expect our product or service to have built-in purpose or we try to design it that way. And here without even trying, but really honoring that internal compass, you have found a way to communicate to your customers. And I understand what you mean about not feeling like they're, they're customers, but your community in a purposeful way that offers value and it is tied into your business. You know, it's like, it's a beautiful combo in the most unexpected way. And you're helping people and you're being, you're helping yourself too, right? By sharing. So it's just, you can't like, it. it's, it's amazing that a tool can do that and that you've been brave enough to give it a shot. So the fact that it's had an impact on your business, it doesn't surprise me. But at the same time, people wouldn't have expected that necessarily if they didn't know the story, right? It's, it's Correct. Um, yeah. I've had so many people that have reached out. And recently, um, they've just noticed big changes. And people. it's crazy to me that people are now asking me for advice and noticing through an app you know, this person that's basically a stranger to them, like, yeah, so, you know, I only see a few basically minutes of you a day on what you choose to share, but I can just really see a change in not only you, but your business sense and how you're running your business. And it's just, it really opened my eyes to people on Instagram aren't just following along to buy products. They're following along for so many more reasons, but not only following along, like they're in deep, like they're, they, they almost, Mm -hmm. it's like they almost know you. And I know exactly what they mean because I follow people on Instagram where I feel that same way. And it's almost surreal to me that I'm that person for someone else. So I just try to remember when I'm having those days where I don't really know what else to do. I ask myself, is this something that I feel like other people are struggling with? Am I... Am I okay to share this? Do I want to talk about this? And most of the time, it's usually yes. And it's crazy to me how it seems like I'm talking to my phone about a problem. Because if you walk into my house and I'm talking to my phone, I'll throw it down. My husband's always <laughs> catching me. And he's like, why do, you get, why do you get so nervous? I'm like, because I'm talking to my phone. He's like, well, not really. I'm like, but that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's funny to me how I've gotten past that awkwardness when I have something that I really want to say, because I know that I'm not talking to myself, I'm talking to this community that I don't even want to say that I've built, but that has like built around me that wants to hear what I have to say and how I've dealt with something. It gives you this responsibility that you're happy. I don't want to say to carry, but it just helps you want to be better every day because there are people out there watching and rooting you on and they want to learn from what you do. And I get emotional because I'm very, I'm a four on the Enneagram. And <laughs> I, that's one of the things I'm working on is it's okay to be emotional. It's okay to have emotion. And that's what I've had to realize is to stop apologizing for it because sometimes I get so passionate. And that was something else I realized was one time I kind of cried on my stories, not because I was sad, but just because I was so caught up in the moment. And I almost deleted it because I didn't want to make people feel awkward. And I'm so glad I posted it because more people reached out and were like, Heather, I teared up with you, but it it was great. Like, I just felt like you were just, you really put your feelings out there. And I feel like so many people bottle them up and I don't know how to do that. How do you have so much feelings? And I was like, wow, people, people, think that me having feelings is a good thing because most of the time it's, oh girl, you need to calm down. (laughs) But once again, putting yourself out there on Instagram, it's like your, your people find you Um, Mm -hmm. and they just, it, it kind of works and you just, you stop trying to mold and shape yourself into who you think people want you to be. And you just kind of, you work on bettering yourself, of course, but you stay true to who you are in the process. And they just kind of find you. The ones that aren't meant to be fall away and it just becomes a really happy place to be. And I definitely can say today, I love the Instagram community. Now, before my mindset shift and learning how to see Instagram as a good place, it was 
a lot of competitiveness and comparativeness and the bad side of what you can allow your mind to do. But I would say once you can get past looking at others and their successes and comparing and rather than just looking at it and saying, wow, that's amazing. I wonder how they got there as obtained to, well, of course they got there because of this, this, and this. You remain curious rather than set in, well, I don't even know how to explain it. I always think of like a grumpy old man. Well, that's just how it worked for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I just, I don't know why I see my grandfather when I think of that phrase, but I just try to remain curious and learn from people on Instagram now rather than let those negative thoughts creep in. Mm. And it can remain a pretty, a pretty great place to be, even though it's just an app on your phone. It is definitely our livelihood and we, we treat it that way. Oh, wow. It's just refreshing to hear you too, Heather, because you are real. You are authentic and I know that word gets thrown around a lot, but it's, in a way, there's an ROI to being real. And you can't fake it. You absolutely cannot fake it because otherwise it just won't work. You'll see the results and lack of results, right? Um, and so I keep going back to what you said about honoring that internal compass and it, it has yet to steer you wrong, right? It is only continuing to to take you where you're supposed it's funny to be you going. That because this, I, I keep seeing this picture in my mind of I, I didn't tell you a story of during my teaching career of all, also honoring my internal compass, which I think really took me to owning a business. I actually was um, my in my sixth year of teaching. I got a job in Florida, and I had gone from teaching in Georgia at a Taiwan school to a very affluent school in Florida. And I thought to myself, well, this is just going to be amazing. And quite quickly, I realized that I was going to be facing off with the principal the entire time of my contract. And it really boosted my confidence. To, I, I, I'm never one to challenge authority, but something about that year in Florida I just I wouldn't take I wouldn't take her no for a no. I was told how to operate in my classroom and it didn't sit right with me. And I kind of just challenged things throughout that year in a very respectful way, I would think. We had a great relationship, but towards the end of my contract, I was basically told, Well, if you if you fill out all this documentation and you do this paperwork correctly, you're gonna pass with flying colors. And my understanding was that my students are at the top of the class. Their test scores are amazing. Like I came in and taught a subject that I've never taught before and we had the highest scores ever. Like that's what I was seeing. And I was being told, but if you just document this paperwork this way, you'll keep your, you know, everything will be fine. You'll satisfy Florida. And it was like, it was laid out in front of me. If you check this and you do this, you're not really a teacher, but Florida will say you're good and you'll get your contract re-signed. But if you don't do that, you're probably not going to have a job next year. And I don't want to say I self-sabotaged, but I kind of remained stubborn and I did it my way. And I remember the last day of school being called into our office and told everything was amazing. You're amazing. Your students love you, but we're just not going to be asking you back next year. And I walked out the door and I got in my car and I remember crying for like 30 seconds. And then I, I stopped and said, wait a minute, Heather, why are you crying? You did this. You aren't going to admit it right now, but you did this. You did not want to teach. You kind mm -hmm. of ensured that you're not going to be teaching there next year. <laughs> and do you really want to try to go explain a whole story to a new boss and them not think that you're going to challenge their authority? And I just went down this whole rabbit hole and went home and told my husband. And he was like, well, you've got, you know, you've got your greeting card shop. We'll, we'll figure something out. And the next week I was told I was pregnant. And then hmm. it was what, maybe three months. I was my third month of pregnancy when Kaleidocut started. So wow. it was kind of just meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was definitely another honoring of the internal compass because I've never challenged authority. And I didn't realize until looking back that I actually kind of self-sabotaged on purpose because it would have been easy to keep the job. Mm -hmm. All I would have had to have done was paperwork. Um, and I kind of just chose not to because I needed I needed someone to say, no, oh, you can't come back. <laughs> Total renegade. I needed that. <laughs> I need that push. <laughs> I appreciate how self-aware you are, you know, to have realized after the 30-second cry sash that, oh, wait, I totally did this. Now I realize yeah, why. 
Yeah. Why are you crying? Wait a minute. Are you just trying to feel sorry for yourself here? Because you caused all of this. It's funny with that self-concept kind of self and soul concept catch-up process where sometimes we're doing things and our intuition is doing it without us logically realizing yet and we have to kind of catch up. It's like, oh, I just didn't know yet why I was doing that. And Mm -hmm. that's interesting. So I would love to hear from you, Heather, how you are managing and how you have in the past too. For the longest time you were working, you're running your business out of your home. And now you have your commercial building. Congrats to you. You're hiring employees. That's big. How did you manage your day in a way that allowed you to be a mom at home and also run your business from home? And just time management in general, what can you what can you glean? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, it's, inquiring minds want to know, like myself, by yeah. the way. <laughs> I would say to begin with, everything was managing me. I wasn't managing anything. I am very lucky and thankful that my business, Kaleida Cuts, started a very, I would say, slow growth. My husband wouldn't, but I felt it was a very slow growth, which kind of allowed me to grow with it and learning that I couldn't do everything and that it was okay not to do everything. And in our house in Florida, I hired my first employee to start taking over packaging so that I could focus more on actually spending time with my daughter and not trying to package with her in the room with toys and be half involved over here and half involved with her. And it just, it wasn't becoming a good environment. I was frustrated. She was frustrated. So I hired someone for that and then quickly just started learning to accept help. Then I hired someone to clean my home and do laundry. She was amazing. Her name was Maria and I still miss Maria. You cannot find people to clean your house and do your laundry um, easily where I'm at. <laughs> and kind of taking that over, we moved here and immediately hired a nanny so that I could start working the business. We had it in our basement when we moved to Kentucky. Pretty soon after moving it into the basement, I realized I'm still doing all of the work and then I, I'm miserable. Like I, I'm doing all of this manual work and I have no time. What what can I do? I have a nanny, but what else can I do? I need to hire someone. And financially, I couldn't afford all of that. So I made the decision to put my children in daycare and um, a learning center. It's kind of a mixture. I don't know what to call it, honestly. I um, feel like a daycare has negative connotations, but that's really what that is. And um, just kind of asked our nanny to take over. And then I, then I just learned to invest in myself because I didn't know what to do next. I wanted to grow a business, but I also wanted to be a mom and I wanted to have it all. And I didn't know how to do it. And that's when I went to the business boutique and then I saw you speak. And then I had another why not now moment. I remember sitting in the tub and I saw your renegade boot camp come across on Instagram. And I thought, oh, that would be amazing. Like, oh my gosh, like this is so cool. I did some research and I, I just honestly, like to be truthful, I looked at the price and I thought, do I want to invest that in myself? And I pushed it off. And I'm like, it makes me sad thinking about that I didn't have faith in myself now. But I remember, and I'm so grateful I did, because once again, my husband, who's always looking out for me, for some reason, I remember walking out when I got out of the tub and I said, hey, do you remember me telling you about Amy Martin, the lady that worked with Shaquille O'Neal? And he was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, she has a renegade boot camp coming up. And I was like, but it's really expensive. And he didn't even ask price. He was like, do it. Why are you, why are you questioning it? And I was like, well, that's a lot of investment, you know, just in myself. I, I'm not sure what will come of it. And he was like, why won't you invest that in yourself? And I had to really sit with that. And it made me realize that I didn't believe in my own self, but my husband did. Um, having someone there to say, it's okay to invest in yourself. It's okay to take time away from what I believed a good mom should be, because I completely started out with the mindset of, I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom and have a small side hobby because I need to spend every single moment that I have with my child. And if I don't, I'm choosing not to spend that moment with my child. And Heather, that's just, you know, that's just not going to work for you. And it came quickly realizing that, and I don't mean this, it breaks my heart to say it, but being a mom is not going to fulfill 
every need and want inside you. At least it did for me. Learning that that was okay and to manage my business and my home life and learning how to let people take over and really just planning out my day and saying, okay, this is this is for work. This is your time for this. When your kids are at home, you're going to be fully engaged with them because you're choosing to have them in daycare for this amount of hours. So as soon as 4.30 hits, you're on mom duty until 7.30. And then you can go back to doing whatever it is you want to do. And I hired a house cleaner and it just learning how to let people take over these little things that I felt like I had to do to be the best mom and the wife that I could be really was freeing because I worried so much about what other people thought and about what I thought. And it's so funny now, but what I thought being a good mom was and really being a good mom is just being true to who you are and being happy. And that's, that's all your kids want. Oh my gosh. I'm just so grateful for, for you sharing and speaking your truth and how many people you are impacting with your journey is while running your business and there's an overlap and they're also, you know, supporting your business too. It's just, it's incredible. Everything you just shared is something that I know I needed to hear right now. And just like we mentioned at the beginning of this episode of we need to do things for ourselves and that will come through and be of service to other people. And, and really trust that that's the way things work. That's exactly how I feel right now because it's like I wanted to bring you on the show because I needed to hear this too. You know what I mean? So it's like this is just great. <laughs> um, it was a selfish move, but that's – I figure it's probably going to help someone else then too. Um, that makes me yeah. happy. Yeah, you're just – you're doing it. And I appreciate you – sharing your time with me today, as well as just your friendship and being able to collaborate with you is an absolute joy. And where can people follow you? They can follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm under Kaleida Cuts. Uh, the <laughs> name is spelled K-A-L-E-I-D-A-C-U-T-S. Kaleida Cuts. Perfect. And it's fun to see that world and the industry. And not only will you be able to follow Heather's journey, but also how inspiring the um, the content that you share and the things that people are doing with your cookie cutters. I mean, it's like a... They are uh, insanely talented. Uh, well, it's, it's edible pieces of art. It really is. It's incredible. Uh, and thank you again for for everything and we'll be following along. Thank you, Amy Jo. I had an amazing time. You will never know how grateful I was for this experience. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. Hit me up on social media to let me know what you think. I'm at Amy Jo Martin on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I want to hear your Why Not Now moments so I can share them on the show. Just send me a note to whynotnow at amyjomartin.com. For show notes and other offers, you can visit amyjomartin.com forward slash why not now. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my email newsletter for exclusive content and announcements. A big thanks to Rock Salt Music for all of the tunes by the talented John Coggins. And of course, a hat tip to Richard Gruer for editing and producing the show. I'll see you next time. And until then, why not now? Oh, 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 oh